What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, it's episode number 37 and we're starting today's episode off on the back of the 3-0 victory over Hertha Berlin in the last game, in the last episode, which saw us maintain our 100% start to the season. Seven wins in our first seven games in the Bundesliga as we remain neck and neck with Borussia Dortmund, both of us off to 100% start. So first game of today's episode, away in Gelsenkirchen at the Veltins Arena against Schalke 04 and this would be the first game we saw slip up in this season, yes, 0-0 with the final score, could not break Schalke down in that game, in fact, Sasha Hubner made a really important save right towards the end of the first start to make sure we'd at least maintain our unbeaten start, but yeah, pretty good about that, seven wins in seven games, scored in every single game to start the campaign off, but goal to draw there away against Schalke was not the way I wanted it to end, and I mentioned before, I don't know whether you guys are the same as me, but in a game where I slip up in and feel as though I should have got the win and didn't play well enough, in the very next game, I look to make amends, so in match day three of the Champions League, this this game coming on Wednesday night, we would welcome the Ukrainians Dynamo Kiev to Dresden. And heading into the game, right from the very first whistle, I was in attack mode. Scored one early, then 24 minutes in. I actually thought this was offside. Evidently, it wasn't. The, off uh, the linesman kept his flag down, and Rasu Dubar ran through one on one to slot it home after rounding the goalkeeper. So 2 0 Dresden, and you know maybe VAR would have disallowed that goal, but thankfully it's not in the game. And eight minutes to go would make it 3 0 as well. Joshua Wagnerman, who we signed last season but didn't really use at all. Scored his first goal for the club off the bench to wrap up the points in a 3-0 victory. So whilst our 100% start ended in the Bundesliga, it remains in the Champions League. Three wins in our first three games in the Champions League group stage. We're at a halfway point now, nine points on the board. Man City have six, Roma have three, Dynamo Kiev have zero. It's kind of how I thought the group would look at this point halfway through. Possibly swap us and, and uh, Man City uh, around. But otherwise, it's it's kind of exactly what I was expecting. As I said, you know, when the draw was made, it's it's very similar to last year's group. You know, you got the, the the front runners, or you'd think the front runners in Manchester City, although they're right now sat in second place. And of course, you got us and Roma battling for the second qualification spot, or so you'd think. And with all due respect to the Ukrainians, decide that clearly do look as though they'll probably end up finishing in fourth place. It's not a real surprise how the group has gone so far, but a win at the Etihad was the surprising factor in the Champions League group so far. I did not expect to win that. And that's a huge luxury as well, because it means if we win the uh, the fourth game of the group, match day four away in Ukraine against Dynamo Kiev in a reverse fixture, that will mean all we'll need in our final two games is just one point to qualify for the knockout stages. So... Yeah, big win there. We do our job. And for the following game, uh, back to matters in the Bundesliga. We're staying at home here against one of our sort of rivals, if you will, in RB Leipzig. Took the lead very early on, then 30 minutes in, doubled the lead as well. You know, I mentioned this a couple episodes ago. Smash shots in this year's FIFA, man. Seriously, I, I, I tell you guys right now, if you're struggling to score goals, um, just just leave your finger off the R1 button. Like, seriously, don't finesse them. Just smack them because they're just so OP. And even if they don't go in, you often get a corner because the goalkeeper can never hold on to a shot which is smacked at him with so much power finesse shots you might be able to claim it cleanly but you'll probably get yourself a corner or like a rebound like we score for our second goal off the woodwork definitely smack the ball more if you're struggling to score goals but Leipzig will get back into the game after a comical error from yours truly not for the first time this series not for the first time in this FIFA year yeah we signed Nicholas Saul from RB Leipzig in the summer I think he forgot he was playing for us now and not his former club just gifted the ball away I don't know what I was doing there awful awful pass terrible and late to get a, uh, get a goal back into the game but thankfully it will prove to be nothing other than a consolation goal not long afterwards nine minutes later Albert Simon gets his uh, I think fourth goal of the season so far a decent start for him anyway in a 3-1 uh, victory there as we get ourselves a big win. Now we take them on again uh, in midweek. So once again, RB Leipzig, second game in two uh, against them. Second game in two, second game in a row uh, against them. This one coming away from home though, and this was not a Bundesliga game. This was a cup game. DFB Pokal, second round. And, you know, the board have said to us this season, I think it's reached a quarterfinals this year or possibly reached a round of 16. But you would have seen by my lineup once again. Look, I've got bigger fish to fry, man. I've got far bigger fish to fry. We're trying to retain the Bundesliga title that we won last year. We're neck and neck with Dortmund, who just won't let us get away at the top of the table. Champions League, top of the group, and about, what, four points from six away from qualification to... Sorry, four points from nine away from qualification to the knockout stages. The cup is just my lowest priority. It always has been, it always will be, and it is no different in this save as well. So we went two goals down very early on. The second one was very unfortunate. Our use of Paulson turning in a rebound after the shot hit both posts. 
Singapore coming back to the Scandinavian striker. And with nine and a half minutes to go, uh, RB Leipzig will gather themselves their third goal of the game. Restore their two-goal cushion, Danny Olmo, making it 3-1, getting his second of the match as we exit the cup once again in the second round. But once again, I'll say this, I don't really mind because right now we are the only undefeated side in the Bundesliga. Eight wins in our first nine and just a one draw with three points clear of Dortmund in second as both teams have made a really good start to the campaign. I'd say even though Arsenal Dortmund do look like the front runners this year, I, I think there are lots of teams you can't really rule out at this stage, especially not at this stage. You're only just enter November. But Hoffenheim, obviously Bayern Munich, I know their dominance might be coming to an end, but you still can't rule out the best team uh, in Germany. Uh, RB Leipzig as well, whilst you just beat them in the Bundesliga, you can't really rule them out. There's, there's quite a few teams really uh, at this stage who could throw their hat into the ring for the title race this season. But obviously, you probably would say Arsenal Dortmund, who have made great starts this season, are the two front runners as things stand. But again, that's why I didn't mind going out of the cup because whilst there are less games to play in Germany and you know I love that the 34 game season with the 18 team league there's only one cup competition you know I absolutely adore that that's definitely something I wish England would look into um, the English FA I should say and you know it, it's still it's still all about making sure my players stay fit we still have midweek games of course due to Europe and playing in, uh, in Europe in the Champions League this year just like last year so if the cup's got to go the cup's got to go like if one competition needs to be sacrificed it's always going to be the domestic cup. So, yeah, but the following game here, uh, away from home, our first one in November against Werder Bremen at Werder Stadion. Uh, took the lead through rounds with Juvel and 21 minutes to go. He scored a game winner at this ground last year. He just loves playing against his former teams like football manager. I'm telling you, in FM, as you know, whenever a player plays against his former team, he always has a stormer. Like, he literally always puts in a man in a match display, gets a goal or whatever, and it's no different for Felix Agu in this FIFA CM. Scores a second goal of the game against his former club. In a pretty routine 2 0 victory there. And for the following game of today's episode, this one was a big one here. Traveling to Ukraine to take on Dynamo Kiev. And again, due to how the group standing looks right now, if we would win this game away from home and get the three points in this reverse fixture as well, we would, qual uh, we would be one point away from qualifying for the knockout stages if Roma beat. Man City but in the end as Bella Kotchap headed in the only goal of the game we didn't need the win because Roma lost to Manchester City as you can see by the table there we've guaranteed qualification with two games to spare Roma can only get to nine points maximum now Dynamo Kiev still bottom and pointless so far the only team that can catch us is Manchester City as they're three points behind with two games to go so yeah, absolutely buzzing with that. Man City and Pep Guardiola doing us a massive favour there. Whilst they keep themselves in the hunt for top spot in the group, their win over Roma means that we have qualified with two games to spare. And I know I do this in both my FIFA CMs and my FM saves as well. And some of you guys question it. Some of you guys don't agree with it. And that's totally, totally fine. But whenever I've qualified for the knockout stages of a competition, be it a European competition or if I'm managing internationally, I literally always throw weakened sides out in the last game or two, depending on when we've qualified. I, I know some people don't agree with it. I know that top spot has its benefit, taking on the, uh, the team that finished runners-up uh, if you top the group in the knockout stages. But to me, it's just always something I've done, and it's what I'll do for the final two games as well. Yes, top spot is still at stake. But the most important thing was qualification. We got it in the bag and I'm far more focused on keeping my players fit for the games on the weekend in the Bundesliga as we aim to stay top. Speaking of following game in today's episode here, Bayern Munich in the final one of today's episode. Of course, lost their title to us last season. Then we're thrashed in the DFB Pokal by uh, Borussia Dortmund in the final by four goals. And now we've been talking about it. Has their reign as the most dominant team in Germany come to an end? Well, on the basis of this game, all I'll say is this. Let's just, let's just ease off that statement for now. Let's not make that statement just yet because this was such a difficult game. I mean, took the lead through Julian Cattell, but really, Bayern Munich with a better team in this game. Hoogner made a couple of really important saves. I had to clear the ball off the line as well. This was a tough grind-out point. And whilst Bayern did surrender their title to us last season, whilst they were humbled in the DFB Pokal final, don't think that they are still not one of the best teams in Germany and the best, one of the best teams in the world as well. Can only imagine drawing that game. Second slip-up in the Bundesliga this season. But it didn't feel like a slip-up. I was lucky to get the point in this one. As you can see, Dortmund cut the gap to one as we're 11 games in. And we're also three clear of Hoffenheim and six clear of Bayern Munich as well. The top four only separated by six points. We might still be leading the way in the Bundesliga. But there is an awful long way to go as we close out the first half of the season. But that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. So a big thank you. Fortunately, hope you have enjoyed enjoyed it and if you enjoyed today's episode then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you in the next episode of club and country very soon <laughs>